In this video, we are diving into a project that combines art and technology. I've always been fascinated by chameleons and their incredible ability to change color. So I thought, why not bring that magic into my own home? That's why I created this dynamic chameleon artwork that actually changes color based on the real-time weather outside. Hot days will bring warm, vibrant hues, while cold days will reveal cool, icy blue tones. On rainy days, the display transforms into a stunning bluish-purple hue. And when the weather is absolutely perfect, the chameleon proudly shows off its favorite green color. The colors shift very gently, creating an engaging yet non-distracting visual effect. It's a delightful addition to your desk or a bedside table. If that sounds interesting, sit back and relax as I guide you through the build process. I began by sketching out how the final chameleon would look. As you can see, the initial design differs slightly from the final version. That's because I later realized the original concept was a bit too complex to build on my own. To create the chameleon itself, you could easily 3D print it, saving nearly half of the project's build time. However, since this is an art project, I wanted to craft it by hand. The best part, you don't need any fancy tools or equipment, just a 5mm thick foam board, a craft knife and a pair of hands will do the trick. However, if you'd like to 3D print it instead, you can find the 3D files linked right below the like button. The first step is to transfer the design from the A4 sheet onto the foam board using carbon tracing paper. Make sure the carbon side faces down toward the foam board. Then use a pencil to trace over the drawing, transferring the design underneath. Next, use a craft knife to cut out the shape. Since the foam board is fairly thick, I started with a light cut on the surface and then made multiple passes to cut through completely. This part takes patience, so take your time. After the shape was cut out, I used the craft knife to clean up some jagged edges followed by a light sanding with sandpaper. The edges aren't perfect, but smoothing them further was too time consuming, so I left them as they were. I also cut out additional shapes for the chameleon's body and eyes using the same foam board. To create the hole for the eye, I used scissors and then cleaned up any excess material with the craft knife for a neater finish. Now we will paint the edges of the chameleon cutout with light blue paint. I chose this color because this is the same shade as the chart paper we'll be using to cover it later. While I was at it, I also decided to paint the additional shapes on the chameleon's body. Next, grab some nice light blue chart paper and trace the chameleon design onto it from the foam board. Carefully cut out the shape using a craft knife. Once you have the chameleon cut out from the chart paper, Apply a thin, even layer of white adhesive onto the foam board and stick the chart paper on it. After the paper is in place, use the knife to trim off any excess chart paper that's sticking out beyond the edges. Since it was getting late, I left everything to dry and went to bed. But I couldn't stop thinking about the jagged edges and they kept me awake. So I got up with a plan. I cut 5mm thick strips from the same blue chart paper and used white glue to carefully stick them around the edges of the chameleon. After a bit of effort, the edges looked nice and smooth. Now I could go back to sleep peacefully. To create the stem for the chameleon to sit on, I started by cutting 3mm thick strips from a piece of green chart paper. I then connected several strips end to end to form a long strip. After that, I rolled most of the strip with my fingers, leaving a small section straight for the stem. Ideally, a quilling tool would work better for this, but it still turned out fine. I made two of these roll stems. For the leaf, I took another strip, rolled it up completely, and then pinched both the ends to form a leaf shape. Next, I marked a 15cm by 15cm square on a milky white acrylic sheet. To cut it, I scored the surface using a paper cutter and then carefully bent it over the edge of a table to snap it cleanly. 
Once the cut was complete, I peeled off the protective paper to reveal the beautiful shiny white finish of the acrylic. Next, I placed the acrylic plate behind the foam board and marked the correct position for it. To create supports for the plate, I cut 4 15cm long strips from a piece of foam board. This time I decided to use rubber adhesive because it's really strong and sets faster than white glue. To apply it, I put rubber adhesive on each foam strip as well as on the markings where they would be attached to. I let the adhesive dry for about a minute and then firmly press the strips into place. I made slits at the ends so the LED strip can pass through later. Speaking of LED strips, now's a good time to get them ready. I'm using an addressable RGB LED strip from which I cut two pieces, each about 15cm long. Remember to only cut along the copper traces. To connect both strips in parallel, I grabbed an old USB cable and cut off a section. The great thing about USB cables is that they have four wires inside, which is perfect for this project. I used a pair of blunt scissors to carefully strip the insulation of the wires. Since we only need three wires, I chopped off one of them. Next, I took another longer USB cable, stripped it the same way and connected one end of the shorter cables to it, making sure to match the colors of the wires correctly. Now we can solder the free end of the shorter cable to one of the LED strips. If you are using an LED strip with a WS2813IC, you'll need to short B0 and D0. For the other LED strip, solder the joint end of the two cables to the second strip. The final connections should look something like this. While I was at it, I also soldered wires to the 5 volt GND and D2 pins of the ESP8266 microcontroller. I'm using a mini version called the VMOS D1 Mini. Now connect the free end of the longer wire to the microcontroller. The connection needs to be such that VCC connects to 5V, GND connects to GND and B1 and D1 are connected to D2. Next, plug a micro USB cable into the D1 mini and connect it to your PC. To control the LEDs, you will need to install the fast LED library in the Arduino IDE. I've written a test code that fades through all the colors of the LEDs. Sometimes you might encounter an error while uploading the code. This is likely because the CH340 driver for the microcontroller isn't installed. You can find the driver link in the description. Download it and click on install. Once the drivers are installed, you should be able to upload the code successfully. However, when I tried running the test, none of the LEDs lit up. I double checked the code and everything seemed fine. Then I realized I made a mistake in the connections. You see these LED strips have cut markings where you can split them. One side of the marking has B1 and D1 while the other side has B0 and D0. After cutting the strip, I had connected B0 and D0 to B1 and D1. But this isn't the correct way to make a parallel connection. The right way is to flip one of the LED strips and connect the B1 and D1 pins from both the strips together. This way the data flows in the same direction on both strips. So I desoldered the wires from one of the strips and resoldered them the right way. After reconnecting everything to the microcontroller, the LEDs lit up as expected. Now apply some rubber adhesive to both the foam board and the acrylic plate. Let it dry for about a minute before carefully sticking the acrylic plate in place. Next, attach the LED strips to the top and bottom sections of the foam board. Be sure that the LEDs aren't obstructed by the thickness of the acrylic sheet. Use the slots made earlier to route the wires and then secure the D1 mini below the foam board with double sided tape. I also used some tape to insulate the wire connections. To create a cover for the LEDs, I cut another piece of 15cm by 15cm foam board. I then cut a sheet of aluminium foil and glued it to the foam board cover. The foil will help reflect the light from the LEDs making them appear brighter. Remove a small amount of foil from the edges and then stick it down securely with rubber adhesive. 
Now flip it over and use rubber adhesive to attach the eyes and other body parts onto the acrylic plate. Next, apply some white adhesive to the stems and carefully stick them in place. Don't worry if it looks a bit messy at first, once the glue dries, it will become transparent. Repeat the same process for the two leaves. Finally, I used an IKEA frame to give it a nice look. Make sure to choose a thick frame to allow enough space for the quilt stem and leaves on the front as well as the electronics on the back. Carefully peel off the protective film from the front glass and place it into the frame. Next, add the spacer and position the chameleon artwork inside the frame. Finally, bend the pins on the back of the frame and secure everything in place. The final piece should look something like this. Now we can connect the microcontroller to the PC once again and upload the final code. This code uses OpenWeather Map to retrieve weather information. So we first need to create an account on their website. Once logged in, go to the API Keys section and get your unique OpenWeather Map API key. Next, I've written a piece of code where you can input your Wi-Fi details, location and API key and upload the code to your microcontroller. The code assigns different LED color animations based on the weather conditions received from the API. It also puts the system to sleep during the night so the chameleon's bright colors won't keep you awake. It automatically wakes up in the morning. This also helps save power. As always, you can find the code, material list and detailed written instructions for this project in the description. The artwork looks absolutely beautiful with the IKEA frame. Now with just a glance you can easily tell the weather outside. Imagine waking up to see it glowing purple. You will instantly know it's raining without even having to check outside. So you can go back to sleep and skip college for the day. The slight animation looks amazing without being distractive. Feel free to adjust the speed of the animation, add more colors for different weather conditions or tweak the code to your heart's content. I love creating art that's not only beautiful but also functional. And there are many more amazing projects like this one planned for future videos. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. Thanks a ton for watching and I'll see you in the next one.